Father, we do thank you today that we are more than conquerors. We thank you, Father, that you have given us the power, the anointing, the victory of the cross of Calvary. Jesus, we thank you that every battle that we ever face, you've already fought it and you've already won. Lord, you've got a place for us in this community right now. And I pray, my God, that this would be the greatest hour for your church to rise up and uh, see the, the, the great thing that you have installed for us at this point of time in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, we must admit we are in a crazy, crazy, crazy time. I have never seen anything like this. I know I haven't been in this world all that long, but in the short time that I've been in this world, I've never seen anything so stupid, uh, so ridiculous as the time that we're living in right now. And, uh, but I believe that God's not surprised. I believe he's got everything in hand. Do you believe that? And I'm excited about what he's doing. And uh, I, I do believe that we're going to see people saved, set free, delivered, goodness knows what else, uh, because that's what God is doing in the hour that we're living in right now. So I just uh, pray today that, that we can get a little bit of common sense about this thing. Some people think the coronavirus virus is God's doing. In the community out there, there are people that are so confused they wouldn't have a clue what's going on. We are the answer. We've got the words that, we've got the words that we can speak to them. Uh, people who don't believe there is a God are believing a God they don't believe in for the problem. How stupid is that? <laughs> to me, that is very, very stupid. Uh, if the problem's not the problem, then the answer's not the answer. And God's not the problem. We know the, that the, Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen? He is the answer, and, and I'm excited about that. I believe this is an amazing opportunity for the church, as long as we don't faint, as long as we don't get discouraged, as long as we don't get dis disappointed. Uh, if we can keep our eye on Jesus, I believe that He will lead us through. He's going to take us by the hand. He's going to lead us through, and we'll come out the other side stronger and more powerful. All I know about this, and I know as Tom was sharing about different situations, and when, when you've got your back to the wall and you, don't, you can't see the answer, you know that your only hope is in God, that when God comes through for you like that, you come out stronger. What the enemy means for bad, God turns around for good. And if our faith in that is not challenged, usually it just, we just go on same old, same old. But when this challenge comes in life, and you've got to stand on what you believe. And you've got to believe what you believe. And you've got to make statements, bold statements even. Then you come out stronger. And I believe that this is what God is doing. We've said many, many times that God is, that there's going to come a great shaking to the church. We've, we've already heard all these things. So we know that this has happened. But if we can keep our eye on Jesus, I believe that he's going to walk us through all this. Um, you know, the disciples were in a boat. They had uh, hopelessness got around them. They, they said, man, how can, you know, don't you care? We're perishing. But Jesus was, was there all the time. And I want to say this to you today. He's in your boat with you right now. He's in our boat right now. And he's just waiting for us, even in our negative state even, call, calling out to him, God, can you help us in this situation that we're in? Of course, we know that he rose up and he rebuked the wind and the, and, and the seas and everything. Like that. God cares more than we realize. God, God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. So how can we say, to God, don't you care? Don't you care what we're going through? Don't you care that, like as Greg said a many times, about the toilet rolls? Toilet rolls seem to be the major problem in our, in our community at the moment. I just hope we don't have a gastric, because uh, <laughs> most people will go and buy nose spray. <laughs> he, he loves us more than we realize. I believe that uh, God the, uh, the whole, and God the Holy Spirit and the whole team, there they're watching over us. They're going to see us through all this. Amen. There's one thing that I want to just really share today. There's a thing called faith. There's a thing called foolishness. And there's a thing called presumption. And what we've got to be careful of is that we do operate in faith. That we don't uh, try to test God, try God. God is well able and I believe that my days are in God's hands. 
I believe that if God knew me before the foundation of the earth, if he knew me before I was put in my mother's womb, I believe he knows me now. But I'm not going to go out on the highway today and stand in front of a Mack truck and say, God, you can help me. Because if you're stupid, you will get a stupid result. I'm not going to go out there if I see a, uh, a, a, a snake running across the ground. I'm not going to go and pick it up and say, God, you can help me. I'm not going to try to test God. I'm not going to try to prove God. I've got to, be, I've got to have faith, but I'm not going to be stupid. I don't want to be stupid. Uh, the Bible says many are afflicted. Many of the righteous are afflicted, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Amen? Out of them all. Uh, there's two voices going around very, very strong at the moment. One is fear and one is faith. Fear brings hopelessness, uh, despair, gloom and doom. People are listening to so much stuff, but on the media, the media, I believe, is a is, is Satan is using the media, media in, a, in a tremendous way. But, you know, we've got to remember that out of all the people that have been tested, and these people are people that have actually come in contact with somebody that's had the virus, or they've just come back from overseas. They won't, if you and I just walk up there and say, I want to get tested, they won't even test us. But people that have, that have been in that environment, they say, 99% of those people are free. So 1%. And I believe that fear is gripping people. These, the two voices, fear. There's a voice of faith, which is hope, uh, excitement. I, I'm excited, excited about the future. Tom was coming up to me today and he was excited about... Uh, the, see, can I say this? It's not trying to build yourself up. It's the spirit of joy. It's the spirit of life. It's the spirit of faith that needs to come upon us today. The spirit will rise up within us that we'll, that we'll stand and we'll say, hey, I don't fear what the enemy can do because my eyes are on God and I'm putting my trust in Him. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen? He never, ever changes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We've got to stay in faith. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I believe that there's a lot of people there that they perhaps think they're in faith and they're not. But I want to say, I believe for the spirit of faith to come upon us. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says this. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I shared this, I think, last week. And this is the victory. Everybody say victory. This is a victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Let me say that again. For whatever is born of God, are you born of God? How many people here are born of God? I can't lift my hand because I'm holding on to my notes. The wind's blowing them everywhere. See, we're born of God. And so God has put something inside of in every one of us. So for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith is in the highest order that has ever, ever, ever been on this world, in this world. Our God, the Creator, the, the one that overcomes. Who is He who overcomes the world? But He who overcomes, who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. How many people here believe today that Jesus is the Son of God? See, these, it's, it's not rocket science, it's simple. It's simple that God just wants us to realize that if we do these things, that God is able to then rise up something within us that will cause us to stand above this thing, not to be subdued by the enemy, but overcome him, triumph over him. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then He's talking about you. Amen? He's talking about me. Why don't you share very, very briefly this morning a little bit about the power of faith. The power of faith. Faith is a powerful substance. It is an amazing thing because it will cause you to, to go beyond the natural. It will cause you to, to not uh, be overcome by what you hear. It'll cause you to rise up. 
It'll cause you to go forward. It'll cause you to, to, to conquer. And that's what we want to do. Um, I believe that we've got more going for us than we realize. And this is a time, I believe, when God's going to re, re, reveal to the church who He really is. Just like those disciples were in that boat, they really didn't know who He was. They said, don't you care, we're perishing? And Jesus stood up and He revealed who He was. And, and, and He spoke to the wind and He spoke to the sea. But then the, the disciples started to inquire amongst themselves and they said, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey Him? And no matter where you are in faith today, it doesn't matter where you are on the ladder. It doesn't matter. Every one of us are going to be challenged to the area that we are. And God wants to reveal to us who He really is so as that we can go beyond where we've ever been before. I believe the church will go beyond what it will ever go before. It will. I believe in the miracles of God. Somebody said to me, when will Greg come back? I said, he could get back, to, he could get back today. Because there's more for us than be against us. The supernatural realm of the Spirit. He could just uh, come here for a half an hour, an hour, and then go back home again. <laughs> to, what do you call it? <laughs> to America, amen. Cheaper to go on that way, by the way. <laughs> uh, of, course, of course, we know in, in Acts 1.8, and Greg's already spoken that, about that, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When do you receive this power? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many people here have been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Amen? How many people have been, come on, give me a wave. I can't wave. Been baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. You see, this power has already come upon you. You have already been endured with power from on high. Paul encourages us to stir up the gifts within us. Because you see, we drift away and we forget who we are. We're like that person that looks in the mirror and goes away and says, who am I? Do, will I recognize myself next time I look in the mirror? Who, we forget who we are. We are children of the Most High God. God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but He has given us power, love, and a sound mind. I won't have to, Greg's already said what all that represents, but that's who we are. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, when the Spirit of God, that's when you received it. Not at the gym, not with much learning. I know people that know so many scriptures, they can rattle them off by heart, but they wouldn't have enough power of God in them to blow the fuzz off a peanut. They will crumble at the time when trouble comes. You've got to realize it's not, it's not all the scriptures and that, but that is good. And I want to recommend that you learn as many scriptures as you can and you recite them. But what really gives you power is when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Faith in God's Word releases this power. So the scriptures that you learn, when you say, you know, different things, that God is well able, I am more than a conqueror, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I remember, I've said this many, many times, we had a budgerigar that used to sit in his little cage and he used to sit there and say, Jesus loves you, praise the Lord, and all those sort of things. He'd recite all those little things, but it didn't help him one little bit when the cat ate him. Because see, it was, it was just reciting words. He didn't realize the power that was in the words. If he had of, he would have looked at that pussy cat and, and he might have said a few other things to that cat that would have sent him, uh, sent him down the road, amen. But instead, he became the cat's supper. The Word of God is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. It is alive. We need the power of God. We need to know who we are. We need to know that today we need to live by faith. We've got to be people that, that, that will stand up and, uh, even against the tide and start to declare. When, when you realize I have been endured with power from on high and I believe today that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I do not believe for one minute that this uh, coronavirus will prosper over us. We can triumph over it, amen. 
if we trust and believe. There are some very, very simple scriptures, very, very simple things. Trust and obey for there's no other way. If we can trust and obey, if we can do what Jesus does, does, says and does, don't be foolish. Don't try to test God. Don't try to prove God. Don't, don't try to act like a, out of the area of faith that you have. Act in the area of faith that you can believe in. If you're having trouble, we are here for you. I want to stand with you. The leadership team in this church wants to stand with you. We will pray with you. We will believe God with you. We will do whatever we can to work our way through this and come out the other side stronger. Hallelujah. Because no weapon formed against us can prosper. We will rise up. We will be the, the church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning, not with global connections, but ruling and reigning with Him. Amen. Trust in Him. Trust Jesus today. Let God be your strength. Know today and confess it as you drive around. I have the power of God. I am anointed. Hallelujah. I am contagious goodness. I, I want to be able to share my faith with somebody today. When people talk to you negatively about what's going on, say, hey, but there is an answer. His name is Jesus, son of grief no more. He can touch you today. Speak boldly about Jesus. Speak boldly. People don't understand. It's time to be kind. I love that, what Greg was talking about. I, I met a guy the other day and his car was broken down. I pulled up beside him. He got the shock of his life. He came over and he said, what, what, you know, I said, is there anything I can do to help you? He said, my car is boiling. It's blah, 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 and all these sort of things. He added a few swear words in there. I said, sir, can I take you somewhere? Is there anything I can do for you? Can I drive you? And I'm not trying to big note, note me. I was in a hurry to go somewhere at the time. I was hoping he didn't need me. <laughs> But I said, is there, I, I've got a friend that's got a service station. Uh, uh, sorry, your, your, uh, Tennille's husband. I said, he's got a garage down the road. I said, I can, I can drive you down there. He can help you if you can. And, uh, and he said, uh, he looked at me and, I, and he said, what, why are you doing this? I said, I'm a Christian. I just want to help. Is there anything? He went over and he talked to his son. He said, look, he said, I think we need to, need to get the t car towed. But you get a little bit in now and there, Amen. I guarantee when I back to your son, he said, that bloke's an idiot. <laughs> but anyhow, let's come through stronger, amen. We will have church here uh, next Sunday, 10 o'clock. If you want to stay home and, and watch the video links and things like that, that whatever you want to do, do whatever you've got to do. Uh, we don't know. Next week, they may have different rules that we can't even have 50 or 40, whatever. I think we've got about 50 here today. Something like that. We can't have that many. We might be down to 10. But I'm doing everything I can. I had permission to go out into the uh, breezeway if, we, if necessary. So I'm believing for God to do things at this time. But He needs you and me. We are co-workers. Do you believe that today? We are co-workers. So go out there and gossip the gospel. Go out there and tell everybody that Jesus is alive. Go out there with, with confidence in your life and say, I'm really not worried. I'm really not worried for myself. I'm concerned for you, but I'm not for me. I know everything's well. All is well. Amen. It is well. We sang that song. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. So Father, today in Jesus' name, Father, I just pray that we pray for Greg and Joe and Joanne. And Lord, we pray for them over there. Lord, he said it's very cold over there at the moment. <laughs> Father, I just pray that, uh, Lord, that through this time we'll be able to to, to build, my God, and, and be able to get a lot of things done that need to be done. And, and Lord, we'll just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for that. Father, they'll be able to get their visas things all sorted out and fixed up. We've got time to do that. Father, I, I pray that for the people of this uh, community today that, that are out there, there's families that, are, that hopelessness is getting around them. Lord, the, the church should be seen as an essential service. There are a lot of people there as, as the finance is crashing and everything else is going down around them. Lord, the hopelessness is getting around them. There'll be people that would be contemplating suicide and, and, and families arguing and goodness knows what's going on. 
So Father, I pray that, that we would be a voice in this hour that we're living in. Lord, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know what's going on. This, this is not taking you by surprise. You know. So Father, I pray that at this moment, the church would rise and be counted in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anybody here today and you've got, say, concern or something like that, you need prayer, uh, please, we're not going to lay hands on people. To me, it wouldn't worry me. I lay hands on myself a lot. <laughs> but but we, we, we've got to be seen to be doing what is right, okay? Anyhow, God bless you. If there's anybody who wants some prayer, come out here. We'll pray. We'll believe God. Amen.